What's up guys, your boy, 20K13, going to talk about 10 immediate, immediate ways to make WWE raw less boring. And this is coming from whatculture.com. It's an un undeniable fact that at three hours of programming the, and the company lacking three hours worth of compelling talent, WWE Monday Night Raw is too long of a broadcast. WWE are at a strange point at a publicly traded corporate entity. WWE has effectively outdicted their competition in the wrestling industry and now is a valuable product in the live and streaming content marketplace. <clears throat> With this being the case, WWE had to placate broadcaster and advertiser with their content and delivering anything less than what is perceived to be the pinnacle of their brand is an issue. However, wrestling as an industry is in the, is in the throw of a revolutionary era with three very different types of performers in one company at the same time and, and all of them attempt to find a middle ground it stagnated the program. However, there are solutions. These are radical solutions for a radical time, and I don't think that we necessarily supposed to all agree here, but certainly recognize that something has to drastically change. Here are 10 ideas for WWE to not just consider, but immediately adopt in order to fix their flagship TV show branding platform and truly become the dominant live streaming brand they deserve to become. Number 10. Break Triple H and Stephanie away from the authority. We should all want Seth Rollins has a posse t-shirt to exist. Kane wearing said wearing shirt, comic gold, that posse includes Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Well, that's just bad for business. WWE needs to embrace the death of kayfabe and have Triple H involved into being the on-screen COO of WWE while Stephanie becomes the chief branding officer on-screen too. Hunter and Steph are at heel just doesn't work anymore because we know that they shut huge baby faces in real life. Triple H still being on TV as the commissioner acted out him from being an actor of our character and showcasing that how much better he is at being a worker than the entirely of the whole WWE roster combined. At this point, Hunter and Steph are 20 year veteran and should be around, yes, but not seen as focal point of the show. Putting the spotlight on wrestlers who need the spotlight in order to swim instead of think it of absolute importance these days. Also, if you really want to do Triple A versus The Rock at WrestleMania, the idea of two old dudes being entertaining is better than the lead heel fighting someone who, by wrestling, the lead heel is also the de facto top babyface too. WWE shouldn't be shooting their own product in the ass. They should be lifting it up to make it better overall. Number nine, WWE needs a ranking system. Okay, here's something WWE should absolutely consider. Raw being three hours long sucks because the matches have no meaning. However, what if there were a ranking system instituted for the WWE Championship, Intercontinental Championship, and Tag Team Championship too? The U.S. Championship could retain the defender every week on TV. NWA Television Championship feel for the state of keeping things different. The money in the bank briefcase will be awesome then because that's the, that's the only way you get a championship match is to be the number one contender. Then shame is being say the number seven contender one week, then having the briefcase and not being ranked the next will be intriguing. Mid-card matches with, with contenders who have ranking attached to their name will then have some sort of heat attached to them. 
Imagine the idea of Kofi Kingston beating Ryback for the Intercontinental Championship and then having Xavier Wood and Big E as a number two and number three contender, as well have Adrian Neville as a number four contender with Ryback as a top guy, never having to outlast Kofi Crony is one story, never then having to defeat a fellow babyface and powerhouse in Ryback add another layer to the story too. Number 8. WWE desperately need a return from the Usos. With Tyson Kidd suffering a broken neck and the primetime players slowly growing into their babyface act, WWE never needed Jimmy, U Jimmy and Jay Uso back on the roster to solidify one or two segments of Raw. Sadly the, sadly, the Uso probably won't be back until Survivor Series, so tag team wrestling will most certainly be, be an issue of concern. The New Day are fantastic, but they heal. Building a tag team division around a trio that doesn't have compelling baby face that can sell for their cooker drudgery make for boring television. In a way, it also gives the heels a certain amount of baby face credibility too, in the sense that the heels become so entertaining at being so bad that they that they eventually become good. Every villain needs a comparable hero, and the tag division sorely misses that. Number seven, pair up Dolph Ziggler and Randy Orton as a tag team. Let's more than presume that Dolph Ziggler leaving WWE when his contract expires this fall. If you Dolph Ziggler, you know that their matches with the likes of Roderick Strong and PWG, Adam Cole and RH, Drew Galloway and Jack Jester and ICW and AJ Styles. Takanashi and Nakamura and New Japan sitting on the table. This on his way out of the door. Why can't WWE make a little money with Dolph Ziggler too? The New Day merely have to say after they won the tag championship back from the primetime players that they challenged and defeated every tag team in WWE. The next week on Raw, they can say that they have made an open challenge for the belt for any two WWE superstars. They have never defeated as a tag team. The next week, out walk Dolph Ziggler, who is accompanied by Randy Orton. <coughs> Ziggler and Orton are both top tier stars who don't have much going on. In corporate, Lana as their manager shows that they're an entertaining three on three aspect and it's golden. Ziggler and Orton as a tag will work in the same manner that Orton and Edge once worked, which was an asset for the company then as it would be now. Ziggler working day through Survivor Series in order to build to a tag team championship loser's leave time step on the pin member of the Ziggler Orton team will be cool. Imagine Rusev healing his ankle through the power of positivity and becoming a New Day associate because he hates Ziggler. Rusev re-debuted at Survivor Series by helping the New Day win and then had a really made feud with Randy Orton too. Number 6. More Paul Heyman. Raw needs more characters that stir the pot. During the Attitude Era, everyone from Crash Holly to X-Pac to The Brood and The Rock would do that on one show, all in very unique ways. Facts are there really aren't very many characters on the program right now outside of the main event who can do that, so why not give them some help? Paul Heyman in credible promo as well. He also understands that not the nuisance needed to get character over each week. I like the idea of Paul Heyman morphing from being Brock Lesnar advocate into literally just being Paul Heyman. Paul, unique person in the sense that he's a businessman, a friend, a veteran, and a revolutionary booker all rolled in one. Paul Hammond popping up on screen doing segment where he be least expected would be so much fun and keep interest high. Paige has a problem with the diva. 
Paul Heyman share Paige pain, and for three weeks we seated them together in segment. Paul advising her on what she need to do. Let's be honest here. Charlotte as a Paul Heyman girl, that's money. Paul in a non-spotlight role with his main client, Brock Lesnar, Lee would be good in order to flesh out character in need of both TV time and deeper development. Number five, WWE from the vault segment. There's absolutely no reason why we shouldn't have seen a segment featuring the Madison Square Garden matches between superstar Billy Graham and Dusty Rhodes on WWE TV last week during Raw. In fact, WWE should be making great use of their video library doing a three-hour show to showcase the type of content one could say find on the WWE Network. Leading into the return of The Undertaker at WrestleMania by Sean Taker wrestling Triple H in a Hell in a Cell on Raw and in a spun it with overdub from Triple H putting over how impressive The Undertaker's ears should, ha should happen. As well, if you really want to get over right back at IC Champ, then show the ultimate warrior at IC Champ and have Ryback talking about how inspiring when warrior ear to what he doing in the ring. WWE should be looking at Raw as much as standalone content at an advertising portal for the network too. Creating the link between the past and current WWE product is of absolute importance. And this is the simplest way to make that happen. Number four, give divas a chance. <coughs> WWE will be incredibly smart to bring up all four other women pitched to the main roster. The idea of a Survivor Series match where main roster job would be on the line and having Bailey, Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, and Team Captain Charlotte defeat Alicia Fox, Rosa Mendez, and the Bella Twins would be great. Naomi and Paige deciding to not assist the Bella in their desire to get rid of the new girls would be fun. The idea of all then having the possibility of two longer and athletic women's matches would be great. Men and longer matches is getting tired as an idea. To wit, the Money in the Bank briefcase winner wrestled the babyface half of WrestleMania 31 main event and nobody really cares. It's time for a radical shift in presentation, and the idea of women being presented like WCW luchadors would be amazing to see. Women fucking up WWE visual presentation is an absolute must. Number three, give the first hour of Raw to other WWE programming. Yes, for the next 13 weeks, Tough Enough will be occupying the 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time slot, usually occupied by Raw First Hour. This shouldn't be the end of this concept. The first hour of Monday Night Program at a space occupied by a rotating door of WWE Network broadcasting would be amazing. Between Corey Gray Culture Shock, unfiltered with Renee Young, occasional Stone Cold or Jericho Live podcast, or long form character pieces. There's a way to make that first hour of WWE a very compelling thing. Add in the match of the week with wrestler overdub giving more insight into the matches. And it'd be groundbreaking and fun. Three hours of in-ring action is difficult to watch without character that compel you to watch. Two hours of TV right now is perfect. But using a third hour to get both personality and the company itself over it certainly was wild. Number two, John Cena, World Heavyweight Champion. Seth Rollins, Great World Champion. Brock Lesnar, Great World Champion. John Cena, Best World Champion. Let's rightly think about this one. Part of the problem with John Cena is that when he was champion, that he wrestled the same match and wrestle literally every week. Well, let's say that we institute a top contender system and that John Cena only on Raw in a speaking role. 
oftentimes wearing suit and waiting for the pay-per-view in order to find out who he's going to be wrestling. Cena as the suit wearing face of the company who is treated like a 15-time 15 15-time 15 champion and only put into spotlight role would be amazing. Raw main event, mid card, or opening match being without Cena, but maybe Cena being in more of a champ who wrestled at house shows and on rare occasion on Raw will work. Giving the spotlight to younger talent and letting Cena have the type of matches he's having right now with Kevin Owens and more of a showcase type situation will be fantastic. John Cena could be even greater in this role. It's all about perception, and John Cena needs to have his character and persona rebranding pushed to another level as he deserves it. And number one, the Wyatt family as the new authority. Okay, so on the current WWE roster, there an athletic 300-pound man who looked like a cult leader, cut convincing promos, and had beaten John Cena, Chris Jericho, and were competitive against The Undertaker at WrestleMania. At one time, he was flanked by a uniquely talented seven-footer and a guy who looked like an act murderer. All that being said, it's a criminal shame that Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family are perhaps being pushed as a new authority in WWE. Bray Wyatt feuding with Roman Reigns helped nobody. Wyatt beat Reigns, and you've proven the experiment to be a failure. Reigns beat Wyatt, and Bray Wyatt is a lead horse with no name. Here's how to fix that. Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns go to a bloody double DQ at Battleground. It's a war. Both got brawl all over the building. Rain good color, and Triple H make the decision that this match is too violent to ever happen again. Shift attention to Bray Wyatt and Triple H, as Bray now mad at the ball for ending his reign of terror against Rain. You have Hunter get laid out by Wyatt the next week on Raw, with the family coming into the ring and doing a number on him too. You end the show in the authority office where Stephanie is bloody, Wyatt standing over her, and Bray says, WWE under new management. Follow the buzzer. Bray as the authority would be intriguing in the sense that wildness could occur on the show every week as nobody would want to go anywhere near his office and we even get word from Vince McMahon that he had received a threat of violence from Wyatt and that he was staying away, bringing back Triple H and The Rock to wrestle control away from Wyatt, but instead having Wyatt pit, pit, pit him, pit them against each other at WrestleMania. that be something to see. Bray being in power and giving Divas a chance, Harper and Rowan get established on the mid-card, letting guys like Brock Lesnar and Dean Ambrose create mayhem will be great. Bray doing even weirder things like, say, having a kinship with Stardust, favoring Paige because she got a darker persona, and just bringing in some bizarre element to TV will be appreciated too. This must happen. Well, that's it, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. See you guys on the next one. Peace.